Well, if I cup my left wrist, here's flat. If I cup it, the club goes up and out, up and out, right? If I bow it, the club goes down and in. Where do we want to swing to the ball from? Down and in. How do we do that? Left wrist more bow. If I'm holding on to the club with two hands, those same things apply with my right wrist. Right wrist bent back makes the club go more inside. Good for the downswing, maybe not the backswing. Good for the downswing. Right wrist more flat, the shaft goes out too much. I mean, this is a huge problem with a lot of the members that I work with on kugornogolf.com is the right wrist gets too flat too early. So they have no shaft lean from face on and the shaft is kicked out too far. And I say, hey, right wrist bent back more. Now I'm swinging from inside. The face is more square and I can get more shaft lean. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what I think is the holy grail. Really the most important thing we can learn to swing the club better, hit the ball better, ultimately play better golf. So the holy grail of the golf swing, right? What is it? What is the most important thing that we can do? What do the better players do that average players don't do as well, that maybe beginner players don't do at all? And that is wrist angles. And let me explain three things that the wrist angles control and then how you can implement these pretty quickly to be able to see immediately difference, uh, immediate differences in your ball flight pattern. So the first thing I wanna talk about about wrist angles is what they control. So when we say wrist angles with our right wrist and left wrist, let's kind of simplify and say they work back and forth this way. So your, your wrist could work back or forward, right? So this would be extension of the trail wrist, flexion of the, uh, the trail wrist flexion like you're doing like you're flexing your um, like a forearm and then you're extending this way okay so we flexion extension don't get caught up in the terms we'll talk these two as we go and then they can go up or down right so they can hinge up they can unhinge down we'll keep it that simple back forth up down now those motions control everything with the club face the dynamic loft and the shaft angle that i just gave you all three of them so what it controls right the wrist angles it controls the direction the club face points <clears throat> open, closed, to the right or to the left. It controls the loft of the club, so you can de-loft it with the handle more forward or add loft with the handle back. And it controls, this is the biggest one everyone misses, is it controls the angle that the shaft is on, shallow, steep. Okay, that's huge. So, if the wrist angles control the club face angle, if the wrist angles control the dynamic loft, and if the wrist angles control the shaft angle, that might be something that you wanna get correct, right, and know about. Now, here's the cool thing. Not only do the wrist angles control the club face, dynamic loft, and shaft angle at impact, they control it at setup, they control it during the takeaway, the backswing, transition, downswing, impact, like we said, follow through. So at every point in the swing, the wrist angles you have control everything. Let's talk about this. Open versus closed club face, right? So if I put this little pointer guy on here, or gal, or whatever, if this is gonna point straight to the right or to the left, is in large part due to my wrist angles. So let's just look at the flexion and extension part. I could bend them back or forward. So when I make a backswing, if I, let's talk left wrist. If I flex my left wrist, or bow it, right? At any point in my swing, that's going to make my club face more closed and de-lofted. That's true at setup. That's true in the takeaway. That's true at the top. That's true coming down. That's true at impact. That's true in the follow-through. Left wrist bowed more, club face more closed. So just with that little piece of information, if you're someone who hits the ball and struggles hitting it to the right, or your face is too open, or you slice or fade or any of those things, and you've got a club face open problem, right away you can start to fix that by adding more bow to your left wrist at any point in the swing. At any point in the swing. We'll talk about how to do that. My right wrist does the same thing, right? If my, I'm holding the club, if my left wrist bows, my right wrist bends back or extends, right? So as my left wrist bows, my right wrist bends back. So the same thing holds true. If I want to make the face more closed, I would increase the amount I bend my right wrist back. Guess where that applies? You guessed it, everywhere. Takeaway, backswing, top of backswing, transition, here, and impact. 
So if you notice your face is open wherever, or someone says, hey, your club face is open during the takeaway, boom, left wrist more flat, right wrist more bent back would change that wherever. That's the club face angle. Now with club face goes loft or dynamic loft. So if I look at the same pointer guy, then that could go more up towards the sky. So that would be adding loft, right? If the shaft goes back, that would add loft. We can see that on there, hopefully. If I push the handle forward, that would take loft off, right? So how do I hit my irons farther? Why do the pros hit their eight irons like we hit our six irons? Because they take that eight iron and they turn it into, well, that doesn't make sense, they took a six iron though. They take a six iron and they turn it into an eight iron by having the shaft forward by taking loft off. That's compression, right? Ball flying off the club face. Now with my wrist angles, how would I do that? Well, watch, watch me adding loft. I push the handle back. What happened to my left wrist? It got cupped, right? The opposite of bow. What happened to my right wrist? It got flat. Now what happens if I want to take loft off? Now I would bow my left wrist or flatten it, and now my right wrist starts to bend back. You see the difference between those two? So that's what adds loft. This is good for like flop shot only. But how many of us look like this at impact? Left wrist cup, right wrist here. So that's face open, too much loft. There's de-lofted. <coughs> And that holds true there. That holds true in my takeaway. That holds true at the top, downswing, and into impact. And the last part, before we talk about how to actually like practice any of this stuff, is the shaft angle. So the shaft angle by wrist angles, right? So when I go to the top, let's look at, uh, we'll look at both hands individually. So left hand. If my left wrist cups here, that's gonna make the shaft more vertical more vertical. If I bow my left wrist, that makes the shaft more shallow, horizontal. Now that's true in transition. That's the easy example, right? Cup it, extend it. We don't want this shaft. Flatten it. The shaft also shallows. But that's also true from here. We always look at swinging from the inside of the ball. Well, if I cup my left wrist, here's flat. If I cup it, the club goes up and out. Up and out, right? If I bow it, the club goes down and in. Where do we want to swing to the ball from? Down and in. How do we do that? Left wrist more bow. If I'm holding on to the club with two hands, those same things apply with my right wrist. Right wrist bent back makes the club go more inside. Good for the downswing, maybe not the backswing. Good for the downswing. Right wrist more flat, the shaft goes out too much. I mean, this is a huge problem with a lot of the members that I work with on kagornogolf.com is the right wrist gets too flat too early. So they have no shaft lean from face on and the shaft is kicked out too far. And I say, hey, right wrist bent back more. Now I'm swinging from inside. The face is more square and I can get more shaft lean. So it changes the angle of the shaft in transition. It changes me swinging from inside. If I wanted to have the most shallow shaft swing the most from the inside with the most square club face, my right wrist during the downswing would be the most bent back. I would be increasing how much I bend back my right wrist in transition. Or my left wrist would be bowing the most in transition. Flatten the shaft, swing from inside. From the top all the way to impact. So if your face is too open, of course we got grip, there's other things here, but if your face is too open you want to look at wrist angles to fix that. So if I'm a golfer who hits it to the right, the first thing I would do is I would with my lead hand, you could use either one, with my lead hand, Hey, let me feel like I bow my wrist more to make it go less to the right or more to the left. Okay, I don't care about hitting it perfect, but I want to hit it less to the right. So I take my grip on here, feeling left hand, and I'm going to say, I'm going to bow it more. Okay, I'm going to bow, 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 uh, bow this wrist more. Now, in the beginning, I don't care so much when I'm doing it. I don't really care so much how I'm doing it or how much. Just let me start the process. So, okay, on the first one, I'm going to feel it more in my takeaway. I'm going to start bowing my left wrist in the takeaway. Let's do that once. And I'm gonna hit a ball. And I'm now I hit, hit that about 20 yards left of normal. Now, if I'm someone who hits it to the right, I'm thrilled with that outcome. Thrilled with that. Now I know if I bow my left wrist, that makes it go more left. Now I just need to find out who, what, where, when, how, and how much to do it to find middle. But I have a solution, right? I'm not guessing now at what I'm doing. I might from there then say, hey, okay, well, I kind of don't like it during the takeaway. I'm going to try it a little more during my late back swing. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take my left wrist and I'm going to bow it more in the second half of my back swing. 
and I'm gonna look for the ball to go more left and less right. Beautiful, right? But Eric, that ball went 20 yards left of my target. Exactly. Tee up another one, let's do the same thing. You gotta change your ball flight, right? Opposites. So hey, maybe I do it in the back, so I don't like that. I do it in transition. You get the point where I'm gonna do it a little more here, do it a little more. You can do it whenever, however, however much you want to get the desired ball flight. But I don't like left hand feels, no problem. I can do my right hand. I can feel like I bend my right wrist back when, whenever. Started early, but I thought that's gonna go inside. Well, it might, keep an eye on it, right, from down the line. I can do it up here, I can do it in transition to change the ball flight pattern. Left wrist bowed is your friend all the time. Right wrist bent back, your buddy all the time. Left wrist cupped, not good, really ever. Okay, if you've got a really strong grip, yes, but let's assume no. Right wrist too flat too soon, not good ever. And again, that's gonna change your shaft piece. So, if I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, club face square to closed, less loft, shallower shaft, I want all those things. So I'm gonna work on my left wrist and my right wrist, okay? I'm gonna use my hands, I'm gonna educate my hands, and I'm gonna hit balls. I'm not gonna worry about, uh, hey, wait a minute, this might be too much timing, I want just by, I wanna use my arms and hands and learn how to do this, and learn when I feel bow what the ball does. The more you do that, the lower and less to the right it should go. And then you just have to correspond where and when you do it. So that's what the left wrist and the right wrist do. There's all kind of tips and tricks, right? Little quick things you can do. Like one of the things a lot of our members really like is the T-drill. This is one that I learned from Andrew Rice, and we did a video on eh, maybe a year or two ago called uh, One Simple Trick for Perfect Wrist Angles. And it was all about um, putting this T. I saw Andrew do this like a decade ago, just a quick video, and I was like, oh, this is brilliant. You put the T in your glove, kind of in the side like your logo, and you use it as an indicator for your wrist angles. So when I take my setup, you notice the T's pointed towards the target. Now when I make my backswing, the more I bow my left wrist, the more the T points away from the target. The more I cut my wrist, the more it points towards the target. Not all the way, but about halfway. So I want to feel like the T points away from the target during the backswing, more away from it in transition, and then down towards the ground as I work in. That would be a nice little like uh, how to do this piece. So T away from the target, away from the target, down towards the ground. In fact, now as I'm just doing this now, I love this again. Right, this is such a simple little drill. T away, T away, down towards the ground. Let's just do one with that. T away, T away, down towards the ground. And now that's a piece, like I over-exaggerated, that's probably about a 30 yard hook to the left. But again, like I love that if I normally hit it too far to the right, because now I have a solution to a problem and I can find middle ground with it. So that's the wrist angles. This is how I would look at that. I would always recommend you use video, okay? But don't be afraid to fix your problem by exaggerating the opposite. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you like the video, do us a favor, click that like button down below, click the notification bell, subscribe, comment. The more action we get in the videos, the more YouTube likes that. Really helps us out, spread our videos to uh, be able to help more golfers. We really appreciate that. If you did like this style video, we'll include a um, screen or a card here on the screen for another YouTube style video on this topic. If you wanna check out cogornogolf.com, you'll see that logo, you can click that, that'll take you right there. We'd love to see you there.